Hey guys, today we're talking about cell organelle interrelationships. The first relationship that we're going to talk about is how the nucleolus, the nucleus, the nuclear membrane, the RFER, and the ribosomes all work together to make proteins. We'll start with the nucleolus. So what does the nucleolus do? Well, the nucleolus has to make the ribosomes. So the nucleolus makes the ribosomes. It sends the ribosomes out the nuclear pore, and some of the ribosomes will attach to the rough ER. Those are the ribosomes we're going to be talking about today. So the nucleolus makes the ribosomes and sends them out ready to do their job. The nucleus, on the other hand, is taking its DNA and in the space of one gene, the DNA will unravel and it will copy just that one small gene as an RNA. In this case, it's mRNA, which is messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA will also go out through one of the pores. And what the messenger RNA is going to do is it's going to find a ribosome to make a copy of it as a protein chain. So the RNA will go attach itself to a ribosome and the ribosome will take that message that the RNA is carrying and it will turn it into a protein. The protein will be made at the ribosome and the protein is sent inside the rough ER. The ref ER will then sometimes modify that protein and basically it will store it the protein. It will store the protein and um, when the cell is ready, it will send that protein off in a vesicle to the Golgi body. So that's how the nucleolus, the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rough ER are all related to each other. So next we'll talk about how the rough ER, the smooth ER, the Golgi, the vesicles, and the plasma membrane are related to each other. This is often referred to as the secretory pathway. So what happens first in the secretory pathway is you have to know which protein you're going to make, and the nucleus is in charge of determining that. So one um, piece of a chromosome is called a gene, and that gene will be copied into mRNA, messenger RNA. That messenger RNA will leave the nuclear pore in, of the nuclear membrane, and it will attach to a ribosome sitting on the rough ER. The ribosome, of course, will then make a protein, and that protein will be the protein that was coded for by that particular gene in DNA. The rough ER will transport that protein, maybe modify it a bit, and will send it in a vesicle towards the Golgi body. When it gets to the Golgi body, a few things happen to it. First of all, the Golgi body will store it until it's ready to be used. And when it is about to be used, the Golgi body will modify that protein. So if we're talking about an enzyme, it will activate the enzyme and make sure the enzyme will actually be able to digest. So very important that we modify things in the Golgi body. The Golgi body will then, when it's ready, send that protein, which is now activated, in a different vesicle towards the plasma membrane. When it gets to the plasma membrane, that vesicle will fuse with the plasma membrane and exocytosis will happen. And basically that just means that the contents of the vesicle will be dumped outside of the cell. Now, if we were talking about the digestive system, say this is a cell in the digestive system and the gene coded for the enzyme lipase, lipase digests fat. So if you eat a really fatty meal, the cell will make lipase. And when lipase is dumped outside the cell, it will end up in your digestive system. So it can chop up the fat that you ate for dinner into tiny little pieces. Now, of course, the secretory pathway also involves the smoothie arc because the smooth ER makes things like hormones. And those hormones will be packaged into vesicles, just like the proteins were, and they will be sent to the Golgi body, where they are then stored, modified, and sent outside of the cell in a vesicle via exocytosis.
The third relationship that we need to talk about is the relationship between the plasma membrane, the vacuole, and the lysosome. So let's talk about what happens at the plasma membrane. Here's the plasma membrane, and when your cell needs to bring something inside, we call that endocytosis. And usually that happens with things like food. So here you see the food is being brought into the cell inside a vesicle, which is really just a pinching off of the membrane. That food vacuole will then be joined with a lysosome. Now the lysosomes are made at the Golgi body. So the rough ER makes those hydrolytic enzymes. The Golgi body packages them up as lysosomes. And hydrolytic enzymes are made again by the ribosomes at the rough ER. So what happens when the lysosome joins with the food vacuole is the contents of that food vacuole are going to be digested by those hydrolytic enzymes. And what I mean by that is those um, food molecules will be chopped up into tiny pieces so the cell can use those pieces to create whatever it needs to. It might need to make some more proteins. Now, the lysosomes can also join up with other things. One example of what they'll join up with is old cell parts. So here you see a mitochondria that's not functioning anymore. So a lysosome will attach to that old organelle. It will digest it, and the hydrolytic enzymes will cut it up into tiny pieces. So then it can be made into a whole new mitochondria, a new and now functioning mitochondria. So that's all we have for the relationships. There are other relationships, but I'm going to leave it up to you to try and figure out how things uh, function together. You know all the functions of the organelles, so it should be fairly easy for you to do. Guess what? You've got your hot questions. Be prepared to discuss all of these relationships in class. See you then.